so we're all familiar with using energy as a resource for abilities. But what if I told you you could use your own health to use as a resource to power your abilities in turn to give you slash and viral on attacks? Hi, my name's Orion's Gear. I'm going to teach you how to do that today. So, Garuda Prime. We're all aware that Seeking Talons does slash damage, right? But what if we applied the party buff Nourish to her Seeking Talons? Oh, but what if we run out of energy? We use Bloodletting, but what happens when we run out of health? Well, I have a few workarounds that just might work. Anyway, there are going to be a few mechanics in this video that seem to be really weird with each other, but actually work for some reason. Hey, don't ask me why they do. I just found that they do. Anyway, I'm going to show you that now. Now, from first glance, I understand this looks intimidating. And honestly, investing three former, and not only just regular former, but umbral former, it was pretty intimidating to me too. That's because I wanted to go completely overkill for my own enjoyment. Also because I managed to have three Umbral Former from my MR30 rank up test I didn't take too long ago. So it seemed like a good fit. But anywho, we have an absurd amount of power strength. A base ama amount of range. And efficient efficiency and duration just kicked off to the side. Now, why? Because... Her fourth ability doesn't actually benefit from anything apart from strength. We can always invest in duration, however, we'll be doing so many slash and viral ticks all at once that it's not actually needed. Like, there's not much point trying to keep something around for a little bit longer when you can just deal it all at one go. Or at least that's what my thinking was while doing this video and this build. So... Obviously, you can go with whatever you please in terms of replacing the Umbral Fiber Intensify and Vitality. However, I opted for these ones because they seem to be the best fit for this build, which is trying to give her as much health, and health specifically, as she can without using any of the other health buff mods. Secondly, we have Blind Rage and Amar's Hatred for a little bit more power strength with Transient Fortitude to follow them. Now, uh, Primed Flow gives me a bigger energy pool to work with and Natural Talent to make sure she speeds up her fourth ability and the way she casts it. No, sorry, not the way she casts it, the speed in which she casts it. We also have Fully Ranked ult Molt Augmented because we'll be getting kills over time and Molt Reconstruct because... And this is the biggest arcane f for this entire kit that I've also been grinding for the past week. Dear so oh my god. Please stop capping things. Anyway. Um, because of the way this specific arcane works, I'm able to heal myself using my third ability. Third ability being bloodletting. I'm able to infinitely cycle between health and energy. And not worry about it at all. And then at the same time I'm able to cast Nourish. Which gives me an increased amount of energy regeneration on health. Which Molt Reconstruct kicks in. And it heals me 6 health per energy. So then I instantly regain that health back. In a net gain. And then I'm able to recast my 4th ability to deal damage. And that just cycle keeps going on. In this build, uh, Dread Merit isn't used only because it's not really needed. This is just like a silly build for me. Anyway, I'm going to show you that now. So I'm going to just spam my second and third abilities, Nourish and Bloodletting, at the same time. And I just want to... I want you to take notice of my health in the top right hand corner. This is Molt Reconstruct kicking in, giving me an basically infinite amount of health to play around with, or at least a maximum of 1070 I can deal with in one go. But at the same time, if I start using my abilities, 
and drain them a little bit. For example, in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see that my energy has gone down to, let's say 180. I use Nourish and I instantly regenerate all of my energy back. It's because of the amount of power strength that's been pumped into Nourish, where instead of a regular amount of energy being regenerated, I'm getting four times that of, of bloodletting. So it's basically a, an instant refresh pool of energy. But now we move on to the fun bit where I show you why this is particularly silly. It's because I was experimenting in the uh, Undercroft with this build and what I noticed was that you can just fly with Garuda which makes sense because Garuda is a bird god of some sort. Now, but you'll notice that this isn't doing much damage to Eximus units. And rightfully so, you go, oh, well, this doesn't seem very practical. Well, let me show you what it's like without. But I've just spawned in a Cosmo Gokstrad officers, which are known to be incredibly tough at the end of um, Railjack missions. And you'll immediately see how how much damage that they're taking. Now for a three ability cycle that also gives Garuda invulnerability. Which allows her to fly around and not really do much else. I say this is quite decent. Also the fact that she can deal slash and viral while in mid-air while not having to worry about being damaged because she is quite literally invulnerable anyway to be able to do this you need a few things you need molt reconstruct absolutely and you need considerably high power strength i don't know what the limit is for the, the mentioned high power strength i just know it's pretty decent and what you'll want to be doing is using nourish first but if you don't have a full pool of energy, then use Bloodletting and then use Nourish. And while in air, use your fourth ability. And at the end of the animation for her fourth ability, you want to hit right, cl uh, yeah, right click. Right click enables you to use some of your um, aim jump, aim, oh, aim glide, sorry, to boost up your aerial time for as long as possible when you run out of energy you just want to hit your nourish use bloodletting and then use your fourth ability to keep you stationary and if you get the timing right you're able to climb quite infinitely and this could be good for just moving from spot to spot in the undercraft or just doing weird stuff like this <laughs> I have been having a, a lot of fun with this build because if you know anything about the Undercroft, you can get status decrees. And by getting status decrees, you're able to really take advantage of all the statuses you can deal. And if you're dealing a lot of status damage with a build that's already got a lot of status damage built into it, obviously you can see the fun potential there. Anyway, this has been the Garuda video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you later.